So I'm talking about magic tricks and topology and the mixture, uh, which I'm quite interested in, of, of topological, uh, topological thought in relation to magic tricks. And the first slide illustrates a favorite of mine in the form of an Escher print, which, as you see, is a three-half twisted Mobius band, with some extra decorations cut out. But the main cutout is cutting it all the way down the middle. And you look at the Escher print, and you see that you have a truffle knot. Uh, and of course, it's uh, quite wonderful to perform this uh, with uh, a strip of paper that's been three-half twisted. It's uh, a wonderfully surprising every time to see the knot appear. Uh, then there's the matter of G4, G13. So we should locate the 13th knot on the knot tables. And here are the knot tables up through the seven crossing knots. And as you see, the fifth seven crossing knot is the 13th knot in the table. And I have indicated seven five, that fifth knot, in three of its incarnations below. Uh, and, uh, and then I'm using the rational knot incarnation in the middle. Uh, and doing a bit of arithmetic, which I won't tell you about uh, in the interest of time, but that bit of arithmetic is very simple. If you look at any one of the overcrossing lines, you'll see that the sum of the undercrossing lines that meet it is twice uh, the value on the overcrossing line. And I've propagated this arithmetic all the way up to the top and the bottom of the knot and find that the arithmetic will not propagate across unless 17 is equal to zero. 17 is called the determinant of the knot, and this uh, propagation of numbers on the diagram is actually calculating a determinant, which is a kind of mathematical trick, and you notice that 17 is 4 plus 13, so I think the 13th knot is, um, is satisfying its role for the sake of uh, G413. Um, uh, and now I want to look at another uh, very well-known tangle called the Hercules Tangle. This has a great long history in jewelry and art, and I've written it below so you can take a look at it. And there's a wonderful theorem due to David Krebs about the Hercules Tangle. Hercules is persistent. Any loop, any closed loop containing Hercules is knotted. Doesn't matter what loop it is. Uh, in particular, uh, this loop that you see here is knotted, and this is the, at the beginning of the Cefalo knot trick. Um, and you can uh, quite confidently assert for quite a while that what you're producing is knotted when you do the Cefalo knot trick. Uh, let's look at the Cefalo knot trick uh, with a ring drop. So here we are putting the ring on the, on the rope. And uh, in a moment, we will be producing the Hercules tangle. And then, since this is the ring drop, I, that's knotted. Uh, and since we're producing uh, the ring drop, uh, we thread uh, the ring in such a way that it's possible for the ring to fall off. And, uh, and then some other correct threading. Uh, so far, so good, it's still knotted. Uh, but now we destroyed the Hercules tangle by dropping a rope down through the middle of it. And at this point, the uh, preparation is over and the whole thing beautifully unfurls and the ring will pop off in a moment. There it goes. Still on the table. Uh, so, a little theory. You can three-color a, a truffle knot like this one, you see, and some knots can be three-colored. The entire arc from over to, from under to under is colored with one color. In this case, red, green, blue. And then you realize that if you move this knot around once you've colored it, you can continue to color the resulting new uh, versions of the same knot. The rules being that you will either will see three colors at a crossing or one. For example, if you twisted it, near the red, you would have one. That, that rule allows you to propagate the three coloration over any representative of the truffle knot and gives us the proof that the truffle knot is knotted because every diagram obtained from the standard trefoil inherits a three coloring 
but the unknot can only be colored with one color. And now we see how to prove Krebs' theorem, because the Hercules tangle can be colored with three colors with a constant color on its outsides. And then if you inserted that into any other of the closed loop, the rest of the closed loop could be colored red by the one color part of the rule, and the entire construction would be colored with three colors, and they're persistent as persistent as the tangle and won't go away, and you can't get rid of the Hercules tangle. But you can kill it by dropping a thread through its middle, and that's what happened in the Chafalo rope trick. Um, now I'm, uh, I'm, I'm contemplating what might happen if we did the Chafalo rope trick ring drop, but maybe made a mistake uh, in the course of the threading. Uh, so you're, you're watching it uh, come into being again, and, uh, and, the, uh, and the looping through the ring, which is going to make it possible for the ring to fall off. And then this operator is a little uh, hesitant here. He perhaps doesn't remember which way he's supposed to thread it, and uh, comes to a decision about threading, which is perhaps not a good one, right through the middle, still knotted, but now destroying the Hercules tangle and attempts to see what will happen here and finds that it's linked. Uh, what to do? Well, uh, one thing you can do is you can turn it into a puzzle because this link that we have created is uh, well known to topologists for all that. It's called the whitehead link. It has no linking number. Notice the red circulates up through the ring and back down through the ring, but it is linked nonetheless and provides what looks like a nice obstruction in the middle of the red rope. And we're going to put that key on the right-hand side and attempt to uh, solve the puzzle of sliding the key through the obstruction to get to the other side. And uh, there's the puzzle stated for you. The puzzle is to get the key to the other side. If you haven't seen this particular puzzle, you should give it a try. I'm not going to continue the movie and let you see the solution. You can try this yourself easily. I'll finish with a salute to Martin Gardner and his story, The No-Sided Professor, wherein that professor vanishes into the fourth dimension, as must this slideshow also vanish. A perfect way of ending this session. So let's thank Lewis one more time.